Welcome to this Heritage Week 2021 presentation on using the treasure trove of primary sources that are held by County Archive Services for local history. I'm Lisa Shortall, Archivist with Offaly Archives, and today I will give you a short overview on some of the main questions that arise about using Offaly's County Archive Service. To begin with, we will look at who uses local archives, where are the archives kept and how are they stored, what types of records might you find in a County Archive Service, when and how could the archives be accessed? Why use archives for local history research in the first place? And after that, we will look at a, an online demonstration on how to use the online catalogue offlyarchives.com to find resources for your, your local history research. Archives are for everybody. They were traditionally the preserve of academic historians, but today everybody is welcome to use archives, no matter what their background, and they are inclusive spaces and all researchers and all queries are welcome. Digitized online archives are a huge bonus uh, today as well, because from the comfort of your own home, you can look at archives that, has, that have been digitized and made accessible on, on online catalogues without having to travel very long distances to specialist storage repositories. But the major caveat to take note of when we use archives for local history is that not everybody is represented in the archival record. Some people will say there is nothing in the archives that reflects their life or their culture, particularly in 18th and 19th century records, which make up the bulk of, of records that would be in a county archive service collection. We're usually only seeing the literate, urbane, highly educated, wealthy and powerful part of society reflected. You might have to search a little bit harder and dig a little bit deeper to find the voices of the marginalized and the underrepresented. Today, archivists are very aware of this gap in the archival record, and we actively try to have inclusive collecting policies, which reflect society as a whole. So Offaly's archive service is, is located in Access Business Park in Tullamore, and it holds the archives of Offaly County Council and Offaly Historical and Archaeological Society. It is open to researchers by appointment. It is a brand new facility and was built by Offaly History in 2019 as the flagship project of its 50th anniversary as a voluntary community group. In an agreement with Offaly County Council, the archives of the local authority and its defunct predecessor bodies, along with archives of private origin collected by both the Historical Society and the Library Service over many years, are now all securely housed in this new repository and jointly catalogued on a searchable online platform. Archives have many definitions, but the one archivists use the most is that archives are records of enduring value. And this requires them to be preserved indefinitely. To preserve material for future generations, correct storage conditions are hugely important. The new building allowed for the installation of environmentally stable storage rooms with a large capacity to allow for further intake of collections. The collections are protected from fire, damp, light and heat and are securely stored and monitored continuously. There is a comfortable reading room and a reference library and Wi-Fi access for researchers. But archives are not like libraries. Because archives are unique, irreplaceable materials, users cannot browse the shelves in the storage rooms and select files of interest to bring back to their desk, nor can they check them out to bring home to read at their leisure. Instead, archivists prepare finding aids or catalogues which describe the holdings and assign each item a reference code. The researcher consults the catalogue and orders the material in advance, and it is then brought out to the reading room directly to the researcher and returned to storage when they have finished consulting it. Archives are donated by members of the public or transferred by the local authority on a regular basis. There is great space in this new facility to carry out large scale cleaning and sorting of incoming collections. Archives can arrive in all manner of containers and in various degrees of cleanliness, depending on where they had been stored prior to transfer. Archivists usually clean away surface dirt and remove items that damage archival materials, such as elastic bands, staples, rusty pins and paper clips. There are so many treasures uncovered at this stage of the process. This bundle, which was part of a larger collection of solicitors' papers, was tied together with a note that confidently said, 
miscellaneous documents of no importance. But when examined, this bundle contained 19th and early 20th century wills and probates, detailed estate rentals from the early 19th century, and similarly dated correspondence. And all of this is hugely significant for local history research. Once they are cleaned, archives are catalogued and packed away into acid-free folders and boxes of various dimensions. A community grant from the Heritage Council in 2020 allowed for the purchase of necessary archival supplies for the new building. Sometimes archives have been damaged in the past and they need expert conservation to prevent any further deterioration. This 19th century minute book has suffered extensive damp many years ago and it has significant loss of text. It could not be consulted by researchers due to its condition. Again, through a community grant from the Heritage Council, it is currently be con being conserved by a professional paper conservator and will be available for consultation again at the end of the year. So what exactly does Offaly Archives hold? It is a county archive collection and they typically hold the following types of records. Archives of local government, which is the administrative history of the county. So these would come from uh, the, the papers of the grand juries, the boards of guardians, town commissions and councils, rural district councils, the boards of health and public assistance, and then the archives of the county and city councils themselves. Other types of archive collections preserved by county archive services can include landed estate papers, solicitors collections, business archives, personal and family papers, literary papers, school records, maps, plans, drawings, photographs and ephemera. And these would reflect the social history of the county. The common denominator is that all collections are related to the local area, in this case, County Offaly. The grand jury system was the earliest form of local government and has medieval origins. The county sheriff appointed the grand jury who were members of the wealthy landowning class. And while their principal function was the administration of justice by holding courts or assizes, their responsibilities increased over time to raise local taxes, build and maintain public roads and bridges, and public buildings such as courthouses, jails and infirmaries. The grand jury system was replaced in 1899 by the county councils that we have today. Unfortunately, due to calamities in the Civil War, grand jury records that were held in the Public Record Office in Dublin were destroyed in 1922, and any archives held locally at the former grand jury rooms at Tullamore Courthouse were also destroyed a couple of weeks later when the courthouse was burnt out. Burnt out. Luckily, though, some records survived from the private collections of former grand jury members, dating from 1830 to 1899, with many gaps, it must be said. And these have been collected by both the Library Service and Offaly History over many years, and they're all now available to consult in Offaly Archives. The Beyond 2022 project based in Trinity College Dublin has been engaging with local archives around the country to virtually reconstruct the archives online, and you can check out their website beyond2022.ie for further information. Poor law unions were established in 1838 due to endemic levels of poverty and destitution, and particularly so during the Great Famine. Workhouses were erected in each union and they were governed by a board of guardians. The largest series of records that survive are the minute books which record the decisions that were taken during the meetings of the boards of guardians. However, while there are a large and almost complete set of minute books for Tullamore and Burr, there are very few extant records for Edenderry Union. Likewise, there are very few registers of workhouse residents and those that have survived are partial and are for Burr Workhouse only. The image here is from a damaged workhouse register from Burr Workhouse during the Great Famine, which is undergoing conservation work this year as part of a Heritage Council community grant. Workhouses were closed in 1921 and the Board of Guardian system was wound down between 1920 and 1923 in a period known as amalgamation. The functions of the Boards of Guardians and the workhouses were replaced by the County Boards of Health, which came into existence officially in 1924, but had been operating in a transitional capacity since the workhouses closed in 1921. Alongside the administration of the county at large, 
During the 19th century, towns such as Burr, Edenderry, and Tullamore had town commissions with elected commissioners who had responsibility for street lighting, water supply, sanitation. There are limited records available for Parsonstown Town Commission and Edenderry Town Commission, and much of the latter's records were actually destroyed in a fire in Edenderry Town Hall in 1945, but no records at all survived for Tullamore Town Commission. In 1898, the town commissions that had a certain population and which were already urban sanitary authorities, such as Burr and Tullamore, were made urban district councils, while Edenderry remained a town commission. In 2001, these were all renamed as town councils. And in 2014, another change took place with the Local Government Act, which abolished town councils and created the municipal districts of Burr, Edenderry and Tullamore as we know them today. So the archives of all of these bodies are held by Offaly Archives, and reflect the changes in local government down through the years. Rural district councils were a short-lived form of local government which were set up alongside the county councils and urban district councils in 1899 to take responsibility for sanitation and public health in areas outside of the main towns. They were abolished in 1925 and their functions subsumed into the county council and the county board of health. The County Board of Health and Public Assistance were instituted in 1924 to replace the functions of the Boards of Guardians and the Royal District Councils. They oversaw the administration of the public hospitals around the county, such as the main county hospital in Tullamore, the district or cottage hospitals, the fever hospital, the TB hospital, and the various dispensary districts. They had a responsibility for public health to make sure outbreaks of disease were contained and to ensure sanitary conditions throughout the county. In the area of public assistance, it oversaw the administration of poor relief, whether by means of payments to the poor, known as outdoor relief, or through indoor relief, which would have been admission to the county home. The board had responsibilities to the sick poor, to unmarried mothers, and to boarded out children. This set of records consequently contains vast amounts of medical and sensitive personal data on individuals who are still living and as such, general access to the collection is restricted. However, there is an access policy in place for individuals who are seeking access to their own records. The Local Government Act of 1898 established the county and city councils and transformed local government administration. The archives of Offaly County Council, which had its first meeting in 1899, contained the minute books, manager's orders, records of the county secretary and of the county surveyor, records of the library development, registers of electors, and many, many more um, records. This is the first uh, photograph we have of Kings County Council, but it dates from 1908. We don't have an image of the first council which, uh, meeting, which was held on the 22nd of April of 1899. Following the local elections in 1920, and in the middle of the War of Independence, Sinn Féin councillors swept the boards and ushered in a new era of local government. And one of the first actions the council decided on was to change the name of the council itself. And from this date, it was known as Offaly County Council. Minute books of Offaly County Council are transferred to the archives regularly, so that in future generations, researchers will be able to look back on the decisions made by our councillors today. Other interesting Offaly County Council archives contain the registrations of the earliest motor cars from registration number IR1 onwards, as well as um, records relating to the development of the library service, cemetery records, and many more. Outside of the official administrative records of the county, both Offaly History and, and the Library Service have acquired through donation or rarely purchase archival collections which add hugely to our, our understanding of the social history of the county. These collections are from every corner of the county, from records of good bodies factories in Clara, to estate papers from Shinron, to milling records from Belmont and autograph books kept by internees during the War of Independence. There are letters, diaries, ledgers, posters, photographs and the list is endless. The state papers contain lists of tenants in rental accounts and reflect the political history of the county through the correspondence, rent rolls, 
accounts, land commission and encumbered estate records. For example, we have records from the Digby estate at Geisho, Bloomfield Trench estate at Lawton, the Stony estate at Kilcormack, and catalogue access to the Ross papers which are held at Burr Castle archives. Solicitors' records contain a wealth of information on land or wealth transfer and can date back from the 17th century. Through deeds of conveyance, leases and wills, it is possible to trace the history of a person or place using old legal documents. And within the folds of parchment, many contain decorative and detailed maps of houses and plots of land. There are albums and albums of photographs and postcards that visually document the history of the county. This image is of Barrack Street, Tullamore, which is now Patrick Street. There are maps of all shapes and sizes, such as estate maps drawn up for landlords, valuation maps, and maps of plots of land drawn up for legal reasons. This is a small detail from a recently donated set of sketch maps, which dates from the early 19th century. Architectural drawings and plans also feature in the archives collections. This is an 1808 plan of St. Catherine's Church of Ireland at Hop Hill Tullamore by the architect Francis Johnston, who designed Charleville Castle in the town. There are other drawings, such as architect's drawings of Tullamore Courthouse, to doodles on a valuation map, to escape plans for Ballyconlar internees, or 19th century fashion sketches. So how do you come to Offaly Archives and see all this fabulous material? You can make an appointment to see material in person. COVID restrictions are in place, obviously, but you can also um, look at our online catalog catalog where some of the material that we hold is digitized. It is a very small amount at the moment, but it will increase over time. So why do we keep all this material and go to all the trouble of keeping it safe and secure, cataloging it and making it accessible to people? And why should local historians use this material for their research projects? The answers are various. Local archives are the documentary heritage of a community in place. And primary sources such as local archives allow a community to write its own history and to record its own social and collective memory. Archives provide resources for people to examine the past, comprehend the present and prepare for a better future. They also preserve the evidentiary records of decisions made at local level, which impact the community from the Grand Jury to the Boards of Guardians, to the Royal District Councils, to the County Boards of Health, to the County Councils. These decisions are all recorded in the minute books and the other records that these bodies kept. And so by keeping this material, we are protecting the rights of citizens and holding public figures and bodies accountable. So now let's have a look at how to use the online catalog to see what resources you can find for your for your local history research. So this is the landing page of offthearchives.com. And just to say that the material that is on this catalog isn't reflective of the entire holdings of Offaly Archives at the moment, as it is continuously being added to and enhanced. So if there is something that you're looking for that doesn't come up in the results, please feel free to email archivist.offalyhistory.com and I will try to answer your query from my own knowledge of the collections here. But if, if you check back regularly on the site, you will see on the left-hand side here, newest editions, you will see new collections that have been added to the catalog. Um, and it's a good, good idea to keep checking back as more things are, are added on, on, a, on a daily basis. So there are various ways to search the material. First of all, just to say you don't have to log in, that is for internal use only, so don't be trying to set up a username or anything like that. You can just search the site freely. You can do a keyword global search, which is a bit like a Google search, so you can just put in whatever term you, you are looking for, and it will bring up all the results that you need to, um, to further your, your local history research. You can also browse in different ways. You can browse the collections, you can browse people's names or names of organizations, you can browse the various repositories that we have here, you can browse by subject matter, you can browse by place, or you can actually browse by the digital material that's on offer. So if we look at some of these things, we will, we will, we will look first of all 
for instance, if you wanted to check the newest editions, you click on grand jury presentments, you'll see that this is a collection that was uh, in Offaly History's collection, but it also it uh, complements the collections that have been kept by Offaly County Library. And this shows the value of having this, this wonderful material online in one catalog because two different repositories have been collecting the same sort of material and now it's available all under one roof for researchers. So a researcher can say, yes, please, I would like to, to look at this uh, particular volume from 1899. Uh, they will get a history of the grand jury here. And they'll also see that there are other um, items related to the grand jury that they can also request on their visit. And um, the catalogue is very detailed. It gives you um, the, the uh, uh, profiles of the creators of the records, the King's County Grand Jury here. It gives you um, some profiles of some of the grand jury members who would have collected the, the volumes in the first place for their own libraries. And it gives you the code numbers for the different books that you, you need to order. So if you're ordering material, you actually give the, um, the reference number as you see it, the reference code is what you would submit in your, your request to look at some of the material. There, this is a, a general code for the entire collection, but if you wanted to look at a book in particular, if you wanted to see this particular presentment book from 1834 to 1836, this here is your reference code, and that is what you will uh, submit in an email to the archivist to say, please, can you have this book ready for me to look at? Um, and I would like to make an appointment for whatever date. These particular books, the grand jury books, will actually be uh, digitized in the future and will be available both here and on the Beyond 2022 website in, in uh, time to come. If you want to look at um, just what collections are available in general, you can just click on the collections tab and you will see that there are uh, various descriptions of all sorts of different archives, um, pages and pages of them, uh, descriptions of their general um, overview of what's in them. And then it, when you click into them, you'll find a more detailed um, catalog of each item. You will see as well that these are the, the uh, repositories that um, are represented on this multi-repository platform for County Offaly. So we have all collections that, that um, used to be kept in Offaly County Library. They, they are the local government archives and some of the private collections that would have been collected by the library over many years. We have Offaly Histories collections, which are slowly being catalogued and they will be, uh, this number will be increasing as, as time goes on. They, will, they are being catalogued and will be made available online um, over time. We also have a digital collection for, that was made available by the Heritage Office, and that is a large um, collection of estate records uh, from uh, Lord Digby, whose collection of uh, rental records is kept in Dorset. And they very kindly allowed uh, the Heritage Office to digitize that material. And it is now available online on this multi-repository platform. And um, it can be searched alongside all other collections that are held on this platform. We also have catalog access to the Ross papers that are held in Burke Castle, which means that um, the vast resource of such an amazing collection um, in Burke Castle is searchable alongside all these other collections so that um, a user can look for all Offaly related material under, under one roof. And separately then we have uh, a very specific um, instance of the Irish Jesuit Archives uh, catalogue. They hold the papers of Tullabeg College in Dublin, and they have allowed us to uh, share their catalogue of the Tullabeg papers, along with digital material, digitised um, archives from that Tullabeg collection on this platform as it contains awfully related material. So as you can see, this, this catalogue um, draws together uh, catalogues from all different repositories. Some are available to consult here in Offaly Archives, others are available to consult in, in, in their respective uh, repositories. 
but it is a one-stop shop for searching for material relating to your local history project. You'll also see lists of creators for all these, these collections. The list of creators um, are really the, the originators of the, the collections themselves. Um, you'll also see names of people who are mentioned in the collections. You can also refine the search by, um, by place. You can refine it further by subject. So for instance, if you want to look at those local government records that we looked at in the presentation earlier, we just click on local government and you will see all local government related collections uh, coming up, all the descriptions of them, and you can click through them for further information and further detail. You can also look um, further refine some of these collections by the type of material that they contain, the level of description, or the media that they, they are in. So there's various different ways to refine and search through these, through these collections. Local history uh, is very often um, defined by, by place name and um, many people who come to our catalog here are searching for material related to a very specific place, either a town or a townland or even a street. So here you can search in the search box for um, a place in particular. I'm going to pick Clara just to see what do we have for Clara. And you'll see that there are 36 archival description results for Clara. There's advertisements, there's postcards, there's newspaper cuttings, there's um, certificates relating to people who lived at Woodfield, there's coroner's report books, the coroner in the famine times was uh, from Clara. Um, there's material from Jane Left Goodbody's um, factory in Clash of Wan, and some correspondence relating to people who, who lived in Clara. So there are absolutely tons of ways of searching the catalogue. Um, I think one of the most popular ways for our researchers is to search by place name. You can even search by townland name. Many of the townlands um, are featured. For instance, this is Ballydownan in the Barony of Geishal. And you can see we have 85 results for, for the very small um, townland of Ballydownan, some with digital objects. You can click in on the digital objects and you can click further through to get a nice um, <clears throat> blown up view. And this is um, C. Todd's house in Ballydownan uh, as it was and how it was renovated in 1861. And that is part of that digital collection I spoke to you about earlier that the Heritage Office organised with Lord Digby's estate in Dorset. So instead of the, the material sitting in Dorset in, in an inaccessible manner, it is now digitised and online and, and searchable alongside all other material relating to Ballydownan that might be in the, in the collection. If we look for another um, town, um, we look for Burr, you'll see you have um, quite a lot of um, material from various different sources. Um, you can see there is Burr material coming from every repository here. Um, obviously, Burr Castle Archives is going to have the most uh, material, but there is quite a lot of related material in the County Library and Offaly Histories collections. So you can see that if you are studying something to do with the history of Burr, you have various resources at your disposal um, to look at uh, whether it is held in Burr Castle or held here in Offaly Archives. It's all described on the one catalogue. And if we do another search for something very topical like at the moment to do with the decade of centenaries, if we just put in War of Independence, we come up with um, 70 results for the War of Independence and 55 of them ha have digital objects, which means quite a lot of these are digitized. So we can see we have autograph books, we have annual reports, we have correspondence from land agents from the Ross papers. We have material from the library, we have material from Burr Castle, we have material from Dorset that's been digitized. 
and material from Offaly history. So there is just, um, it is just a great way of drawing all these um, sources together for, your, uh, for the purposes of your research. You can save these, these uh, searches to your clipboard uh, to keep them all uh, together uh, so that if you come across something and you, you don't want to read about it just yet, but you just want to save it, you can just add that to your clipboard and you can say, yes, I'd like to look at this as well. I'm going to add that to my clipboard. And then later on, you can come back to your clipboard and um, you can you can see what you have saved through all your searches. Um, so um, the War of Independence um, can be further searched by uh, the name of some of the people who are mentioned in the records. You can further refine your search by, by place. You can further research it um, by genre, which would be a, a nice way to do it. Sometimes there are a lot of drawings in autograph books. You can bring up all the drawings together and you can see all the different um, drawings that um, internees who were in Ballykinler or Rath internment camps, um, they, their drawings are, are, are preserved in these autograph books, which are held in the archives. And this kind of material has been digitized under the decade of centenaries projects that Offaly History and Offaly Libraries are involved in, in this year, 2021. Another way to search um, is to click on digital objects, which will allow you to search all digitized material that's available on Offaly Archives at the moment. Now it will increase over time, but it is um, a very nice idea to just browse through it to see what is there at the moment. You can see that there are various different collections that have been partially or fully digitized. The Digby Irish Estates is this, the estate rentals that are held in Dorset, they're fully digitized. Um, we have partial digitization of a lot of these other collections and you can just go, go straight through here, for instance, if you wanted to see what is, has been digitized as part of, say, the Woodfield Papers, which is in Clara, you can see that there's a, a huge amount of uh, material there that can be further refined then by name. So, for instance, if you wanted to see more um, pictures of Constance, Charlotte Lamb, we can click on that and we see lots of different uh, pictures of her. If we want to refine that by where she was, we can click on, say, Tinamuk and we can see any pictures of her that, was, uh, that were taken in, in, in uh, Tinamuk. And you can then click in and click through and you have uh, a, a lovely photograph with the reference number on it. So there are Huge, loads of different ways. Um, you can actually then click uh, back into the, the description of that photograph and you'll get a, a, a better um, idea of the context in which it sits in the whole collection. So you can see what collection it comes from. It actually comes from the Woodfield Papers and the, it comes from a subsection in that, those papers relating to Dr. Francis William Lamb and his file of photographs. And this is the photograph, uh, the individual photograph of Constance Lamb. And um, it gives you uh, some information such as uh, the creators, the Lamb family. You can actually search it further. You can actually bring up Constance Charlotte Lamb's authority record. And you can see that you will have her dates of birth you have a sort of a pot and bio and uh, her family genealogy and how she's related to other members of the family. And all of these are live links and you can click through to any of these people to find more information about those and what other, um, you can see what other um, material that relates to them. So there's 180 results that are linked to Constance Charlotte Lamb. So it is a very uh, useful way of drilling down into all the collections to see what material is available for, some, for a particular individual. And it can bring up material that is actually in places that you might expect it. And so the catalog is, is a useful tool in uh, drawing disparate sources together. And you can add all these to your clipboard and uh, keep them for the end of your search when you can revise your, your, your search results and see what you'd like to, to order to look at in the, in the archives themselves. Now, some of these, this material related to Constance is digitized 
or there's um, it would need to be uh, accessed in the archives themselves. But um, as I say, the digital content will increase over time. So as a recap, you can log on to awfullyarchives.com and you can search in multiple various ways to find the material you're looking for. You can add it to your clipboard and when you have all your references, you can then contact archivist.offlyhistory.com to place your order, or you can look at the material online if it has been digitized.